On today's episode of Watch Chair Go, I buy the best daily driver of all time. What is going on guys? I am Watch Chair Go, and today I am here with my new to me 2017 Chevy Volt Premier that I picked up from CarMax in Las Vegas. That's why I was in Las Vegas. I was picking this up and driving it home. It was a very long drive, but we're gonna talk about that in the next episode. Don't worry, we will cover that uh, 13 to 1800 miles, whichever one it is, in a lot more depth than we will in this video. So stay tuned for that. Get subscribed if you wanna know what it costs to drive one of these and what road tripping one is like. But today, like I said, we're gonna talk about the 2017 Volt Premier, why I bought it, how it was impossible to buy, and then we're gonna go through it. I'll show you all of its features and quirks or something like that. So when the gas prices started going up three or four months ago, I started looking for a Volt to replace the truck as a daily. I've been daily driving the F-250 Platinum for a long time. And as you guys know, diesel is at least $5 a gallon everywhere and it gets 14 miles a gallon. So it consumes your very expensive fuel very, very quickly. And of course, everyone knows that I had a first gen Volt. It seems like everybody watched those videos and they were all interested to see how the first gen Volt was. And that car was very good. Now, mine wasn't, it was a Premier, but it was never listed as, I don't know. It had basically all the options and it was a wonderful car that I drove for years and it really never did me wrong. So when I needed to replace the first gen Volt with something else equally as efficient, what could be better than the second gen Volt that is more efficient in every way? So. The old Volt, solid, but this one is turned up to, I don't know about 11, but we'll say the old one was eight and this one's turned up to a 10. So it has a 105 horsepower four cylinder. The old Volt had to run on premium. You could not run it on unleaded because it was a uh, high compression. They lowered the compression in this one and it's a larger displacement. So it runs fine on 87 octane. That's combined with two electric motors. There's a 117 horsepower motor and a 64 horsepower motor. And all three of those can work uh, in tandem. It, well, series parallel is what they call it with the Voltec system that runs this thing. It's very good. All the hybrid stuff works great. And uh, I've never had an issue with that and I've put a ton of miles on this one and it's been awesome. The EPA claims the second gen Volt will get 420 miles of combined range. That's electric plus gas. And it's actually rated at 53 miles of electric only range. Now, when I bought it, I thought it had 70 miles of electric range. That's just what people have been getting with it. Uh, it looks like I'm getting less electric range than that already, but hey, if it gets 53, I'm gonna be very happy with that. Also, when I left Las Vegas with this thing, the gas mileage was pretty pitiful. It was like 34. It's almost 36 right now after putting some miles on it, which means it's getting closer to what it's rated at, which is about 42 miles a gallon. And the combined is like 106 miles per gallon E. That's uh, about 10 better than the first gen. I think that one was 96 or 98. So like I said, I started looking for the perfect Volt about four months ago. And second gen Volts are all over the map because there's the base model and then there's the Premier and then there's Premiers with options and there's base models with and without options, obviously exactly what you would expect from any car. But being an EV, you usually expect them to be simplified and there to be basically two price ranges. Not so with this thing. And of course, miles are all over the map too. So it was hard to find the perfect one. After about three months of looking, I'd basically given up and I was like, let's just buy any Volt there is, any second gen there is, and I'll be okay with it because it'll have CarPlay. Well, I quickly talked myself right back out of that. And I was like, if you're gonna buy another car that you wanna drive for a long time, just buy the right one. So after a ton of looking, I found a Premier with every option and the only option that I don't love about it is that it's the California emissions package. And the fact that it came from California created a huge problem buying it. So I bought this about a month ago from CarMax, actually more than a month ago for $26,000. And it was in California. And there's a big issue with cars that are in California. You have to pay the sales tax on the car no matter what. If you live out of state in any other state, you don't pay the sales tax and you pay it when you get back to your home state. Well, in California, you have to pay the sales tax if you wanna drive it off the lot or it has to be shipped out. So I said, I'll take this one, ship it to Las Vegas and I'll come get it. I didn't wanna ship it here. It costs like $1,500 to ship to Wichita. It costs $200 to ship from California to Vegas. Obviously that's the move. Flights to Vegas cost nothing. 
$84 to be precise. So I pulled the trigger on that. I did all the paperwork. You can do all of it online, obviously. My second car I bought from them just because the financing's easy, everything's easy. It's just nice to do business with them. Also, CarMax will take care of the car if anything goes wrong, which is a huge deal. So I did that and it took almost a month for them to get the title. And then they shipped the car to Las Vegas and that took one more week. So, I mean, really the timeline's crazy. I've been waiting on this specific car for a long time. It was the cheapest premiere with every option that also had almost no miles on it. It has 39,000 miles on it and it was everything I wanted. <laughs> so I found the perfect daily driver and it was a lot of, uh, I guess more of a lot of waiting. I was gonna say a lot of work. It was a lot of waiting to get it and it's finally here. It has the best wheels. It's the right color. I don't really care about the color that much, but it's a good color. It has the right interior. And it, like I said, all the options, including one option I don't want, which is the California emissions package. This one does have that because it was a California lease. In fact, the California ones and the 10 other states that had California emission package compliant cars, those ones got the car six months to basically a model year earlier. They got uh, 2016s and it became available everywhere else as a 2017. So there was a strange gap between the first gen and the second gen. And the other thing that's crazy is the first gen ran for a long time, like nine years. There are a ton of first gen volts. And the second one, unfortunately, had the plug pulled in 2019. So this is a 2017, you could have uh, 2016s and then 17, 18, 19. That's only a four year run. And uh, they also didn't sell it as as many rebadged cars. The first gen was rebadged to multiple cars. Like of course the ELR, the Opel Ampra, all of those. This was really only rebadged to one of the Buicks and a Holden. There it is, that's the history of the second gen Volt. And I am super excited to have the perfect car. So let's start by looking under the hood and checking out that drivetrain. Ooh, that is unbelievably clean. It is crazy having a car that honestly barely has dirt under the hood. It is so clean. This is the first time I've opened the hood on this thing. And let me tell you, it looks incredible. So there's some EGR stuff that's interesting. You don't see that very often. This must be the first O2. And then you can see the second O2 sensor. So there must be a cat shoved in right there. Uh, there's exhaust gas temp, which is interesting. Uh, EGR, I assume that's probably not on the rest of the US models. I don't know for sure, but I mean, it looks like there's a ton of emission stuff that is thrown onto this thing. A bunch of emission stuff that's honestly pretty rare and might make working on this a little more complicated than it needs to be. Also more expensive for sure, but hopefully I never have to work on this car. That is the reason I bought it. If you're a mechanic, you know, you do not want to have to work on your daily driver. You're already working on cars all day. Nothing's worse than your own car braking. One interesting note about the front end, uh, if you take a look at the Chevy badge, it tells you if the car has adaptive cruise. It has a clear window here if you have an adaptive cruise car. And if you have a base model or no adaptive cruise, this plastic piece continues and the Chevy badge is in the middle. So adaptive cruise cars, you just look for these little things right there, the little things, and that will tell you if you have adaptive cruise or not. So this also has front parking sensors. Like I said, every option. It can parallel park. It has blind spot monitoring radar i mean it literally has everything shoved in it you would expect from a higher end luxury car so the volt is a five door because it's a hatchback and you've got your charging port right here just push on that to open it the old one you had to unlock that door but now it seems like that opens automatically you still have the button to unlock the gas door which is right here and on the first gen you had to push a button up here to open the charge door so they've simplified that it's got the newer style window controls that are in all the GM cars. It still doesn't have power seats. Although you can get a power seat in the 2019 Premier, it's standard and there is an option. And of course that's the last year and the rarest one. So thanks GM. Thanks for uh, holding out on us until the end and then not letting us buy it. The back doors are super simple, lightweight. As you can see, there's really nothing there except for plastic, a little bit of padding right there for your arm. The back seats look even nicer than the first gen. They're heated, which is a big improvement. Uh, you could get heated rear seats in the first gen, but now I think they were standard. Uh, you got a 12 volt accessory port right there, two cup holders. This is new though. The old one had a console that would flip up and down, and this could not be a seat in the uh, first gen Volt. Now it's a seat or an armrest. The old one was like a permanent ski pass through. There was nothing here and the armrest could be lifted out if you wanted even more storage. I didn't even have the armrest for mine. So now it's actually a seat and they can all flip down. 
there's how they fold flat, 60-40, and it's honestly, I think this is a lot nicer than the first gen setup. Here's the rear hatch. It has incredible looking taillights. I was rolling behind one of these the other day, and it was just absolutely beautiful. It kind of looks like the Halo sword, so that makes me happy, and it's just a nice red glow when it's going down the road. You can see the rear parking sensors from the back. Uh, you can see the backup camera right there, something my first gen didn't have, the later ones did. And the reverse light used to be a big single on the first gen, and now it has normal reverse lights like every other car on the road. Plenty of storage in the back. I mean, the Volt can basically be a truck once you flip the seats down. It just has a massive amount of interior volume being a hatchback. Super useful in here. You can see the factory 110, 120 volt charger is hiding right in there and under here we should have the inflator there's the 12 volt battery i'm sure it's stock because it's maintained by the uh, hybrid uh, like 400 to 12 volt converter so the car battery never really goes bad in your volt really any ev because it's always being maintained to perfection uh, the inflator for the tires should be right there and here is the cargo cover it looks like it's never been used which is cool over here in the corner uh, you can't see much of it but that is the bose subwoofer and it gets after it. It's a good little subwoofer. So that's the hatch. The split glass is also gone. If you remember the first gen, everything from here down was glass, uh, kind of like an old CRX. And it's kind of like, it just doesn't work. The Aztec's exactly like that. Obviously I have the Aztec. It has very poor rear visibility with its split glass. Uh, I'm glad it's gone on this one because the rear visibility is just fine and you don't end up hunting between the glass with your eyes. It's really more of a distraction than anything. I get it. It's a nice design element, but it's a lot nicer without it. Gas door right here. They also added lock and unlock buttons to every door, which is a massive improvement. Thank you, GM, for that one. Uh, pretty much all the cars that had prox keys used to only have it on the front, and now everyone's starting to put it on every door where it belongs. Say, you know, you're putting your groceries in the car and you need to unlock the back door. You had to go up here and push the button and then go back to the back. Not to mention you probably had to push the button twice. If you use the driver door, it only unlocks one. And then the second one is the second press. So it's so nice to have it on every door. Over here on the passenger side, everything's pretty simple, but we'll take a look at the glove box. I haven't actually looked in here myself, so I don't know what's in here. Nice, more HOV lane stickers. These, I'm gonna take them off obviously, but it's cool to have them. If you need to get an HOV lanes anywhere else, you can pretty much get away with it with this. Wow, here's the window sticker from when it was resold as certified pre-owned. It sold for $20,000, but that was two years ago, basically, when cars were, they just hadn't appreciated to the levels they have today. I sold my old Volt for $8,000. It's now worth eleven dollars to $12,000. So Volts have skyrocketed because everybody wants them. The factory manual is still in there, in the bag, 2017, MyLink Entertainment System. There's the manual. So that's the glove box, nothing to it. So now we've been over all the usual things. Let's start getting into the fun stuff. The cool additions to this car, I can just hit them all right off the bat, are adaptive cruise, obviously a huge deal. Auto high beams, another huge deal. It makes your life much simpler while driving. It has a lane keep assist, so that'll bounce off the lines. It won't steer straight down the road, but it'll bounce off the lines. It has a heated steering wheel, which was added for the Gen 2s and is super nice. This one has wireless charging which is awesome, one of the rarest features in the car. We'll flip the console open here and take a quick look at that. The wireless charger is right there. You slide your phone in like this, it sits straight up and down. You can't close the lid once your phone's charging, but it does work. And if you're in an emergency, like I was when I picked up the car, it'll charge your phone. So what a lifesaver. I've already filled the console up with napkins. It doesn't have much room in there at all, so that's just what you get to deal with. It has four cup holders, which is nice. You've got two right here and two in the back. The mode button right here switches the drive modes between uh, normal, sport, mountain, and hold. You've got your front parking sensors or parking sensors in general right there. This is self-park traction control and your usual Prindle, except for the L is low in the Volt, which means full region. If you drive in low all the time, like I try to, as soon as you let off the gas, it just dumps it right into the region. It feels like you drove into a lake, but it's a lot more efficient and will help you use all the regen you can coming to a stop. Hazards are right here. Electronic parking brake. You've got two USB A's down here. One there, one there, a aux port in the middle and 12 volt accessory right there. The shifter is actually pretty cool. It has the old Voltec design and the little waves that are on the uh, front bumper, engine cover, stuff like that. Moving up the console, before we come back, you've got an auto dimming mirror. You do not have home link. I don't know if that was an option or not. 
Uh, it wasn't in my old one either. Plus it's built into CarPlay now since, you know, CarPlay controls your garage door and when you get close to your house, it automatically pops up. Uh, I don't really need it, but I think it goes right there. It's the only thing this car could be missing. OnStar's right there, LED interior lights. It also has lighted vanity mirrors on both sides, which is nice. On the other side of the visor, you have little clips on both sides for parking tickets or whatever you want. I don't know if the visors extend. I don't think they, oh, they do. All right, nice job, GM. Steering wheel controls are laid out well. After a few minutes, you get used to them. This navigates everything in the cluster. This navigates all the crews and there's lane keep heated wheel. Here's your radio uh, forward back and the radio volume is up and down right there. And this paddle is just one big switch. And that is your full region. So if you hold that, it just locks it into region while you're holding it. Light controls are right there. There's your dimmer and here's you know, high beam, auto high beam, and turn signals. So that's basically all the controls in this car. Nice big power button. The old power button was square, if you remember, like a rounded rectangle down here. And uh, the screen, I don't, I don't love the way it's laid out, but it works just fine. You think it would tilt up a little bit more, but it's laid way back. And for some reason, you can see it very, very well. So we'll start the volt up, hit the power button, have to deal with a few dings here as it comes to life. You get the MyLink screen over there, the gauges kind of animate to life. I have this in modern enhanced, which gives you all the data that the thing can show. Here's your battery range. Here's your gas engine range and uh, fuel battery and whatever you want in the center screen. It can throw a ton of information in there. And over here in the MyLink system, it's standard GM MyLink. Um, there's really not much I need to show you guys here, but I'll flip through each screen quickly. Here's the audio, it tries to open the Bluetooth on my phone. There's the phone, it shows that my iPhone's connected. You can have your contacts, voicemail, and multiple phones. Everything you would expect from MyLink. This is CarPlay or Android Auto. Here's OnStar's navigation. There's the settings screen. It has settings for everything. A bunch of teen driving, and you can limit the speed, stuff like that. So the screen you guys actually wanna see in here is of course energy. It shows that I haven't used any gas at all this drive, but I have gone 46.7 miles so far. And honestly, it still has some range to go. Uh, I have wrecked the lifetime miles per gallon since I drove back from Vegas, but hey, it's there. There's the energy flow. It shows the, you know, the map that shows right now we're using battery. When the car is moving, you can see the energy flow moving back and forth. There's all your charging settings. You can set the charge limit on the 120 volt cable, which is cool. Right now it's on eight and I can change it to 12 and there you go. You can set when it starts charging and a bunch of other options as well. That is the energy screen. And there's your text messages. And here is OnStar. OnStar ready. Thank you. Goodbye. Climate controls are standard. Uh, Premiers have remote start and remote start automatically turns on the heated seats when it's cold out. And it also turns on the wheel, which is a nice touch and everything else pretty normal. Single auto climate control in this car. You would think being a Volt Premier would have gotten dual, but nope. One zone of climate control for the whole car. Now you've seen everything there is to know about the Volt. The wheels are excellent. I think they're even better than the first gen, which had very good wheels. They're alloys. And honestly, another nice benefit of EVs is you never need to do anything with the brakes and there's no brake dust. You just keep it in regen as much as you can. And my last one, I sold at 100,000 miles on original pads and there was almost no wear. So use your regen and it'll save you crazy money. I don't have the original sticker for my car, but I think it was probably about a $42,000 MSRP. I paid 26, I'm absolutely happy with that. Although I sure wish I was the guy that paid 19. Man, he got lucky. This car is worth so much more money now than it was when he bought it. Well, you've seen everything there is to know about the Volt. Let's get it out on the road and see how it drives. It's exactly what I would expect. It feels, it handles just like the Gen 1 did. I'd say it might be a little bit more refined, but for the most part, the improvement that I was looking for was more battery life and, you know, features. So here we are going through a corner. Handles pretty flat. No really annoying body roll. I'll use the regen paddle to slow down for this corner. So no touching the brakes at all. Turn in and then I'll just floor it and it blows the tires off. Traction goes for it. And this is not in sport, this is in normal mode. You can see that, you know, the mode is not turned up or anything like that. Uh, EV range, it's currently showing 42. And I haven't really floored this thing yet. I definitely haven't driven it on only battery. This is my first time driving it on only battery. 
uh, even though I've put a lot of uh, ice miles on it so far. So we'll flip it over to Sport here in a few when we find some uh, slightly more dry streets. It did just rain here and we'll try to get on it and see what that 30 to 60 feels like. The old Volt could do that EV magic from 30 to 60, so I kind of expect this will be exactly the same. It is very smooth. You can tell the steering is uh, electric power steering. Sometimes it shows its hand a little more than you'd expect. I mean, it's no race car. It is supposed to be a commuter car, but every once in a while, the EPS is a little bit weird. And also, sometimes you're trying to move through lanes and the uh, auto lane keeping just kind of pushes the car somewhere you didn't want it to be. We are in Sport now in 30, so let's go full throttle. It definitely doesn't hit hard. There you go. Now we don't expect it to be like the fast EVs and it definitely isn't, but it does kind of kick your head back against the headrest and go. It's uh, absolutely effortless acceleration. You just hear the whine from the electric motors and the inverter all doing their magic and harmony, which is honestly a really cool sound and it just is going 60. I didn't time that, but it's plenty of acceleration for any normal day-to-day -day activities, hopping on the highway, uh, just bombing through town, you need to pull out in front of a bunch of traffic, this thing will just snap to the speed limit, which is exactly what you need. It keeps you safe and keeps everyone around you safe because the car is out of the way. This does have the Michelin Energy tires on it, which are, I think they're low rolling resistance tires made for hybrids and stuff like this. Sometimes those tires are incredibly loud and that's made worse by the fact that the Volt is kind of poorly insulated. Obviously one of their design goals is keeping weight down. A lot of the cars built around that, you know, no power anything, you don't have power folding mirrors, you don't get power seats. Uh, you know, we talked about all that earlier. You get those lightweight digital amplifiers for the speakers, all that crazy stuff GM did to make this light. So they also left out the sound deadening. There's, there's some there. It doesn't feel like a tin can, I gotta say that. But also it is no modern luxury car. It is very much a commuter car that is probably the best at doing what it does. A typical EV usage, we are hanging out at a stoplight and when it drops, I'll just floor it and you know, we'll do the thing that EVs are supposed to do very well, and that is get out of the hole. <laughs> Blew the tires off, traction flashed twice, there it got traction halfway through the light, and it's going the speed limit, and it's going fast. That's quick! This car is so much faster than the first gen Volt. I don't know if that was faster than the Bolt. I've launched that too. Um, that one felt pretty quick. But that's properly quick for what this car is. I am mind blown. The old one, zero to 60, was like 10 seconds. This thing was 40 through the light and 60 just a second after that. So that's very impressive. Uh, I'm happy, I'm very happy about that. I think we've covered it all. Uh, my only real annoyance so far is the fact that the CarMax tag that they put on the front sets off the parking sensors whenever you come to a stop. So you'll start rolling up to a stop and the radar on the front will pop up and then it'll start beeping at you to say that you're gonna hit something when it's really the tag flapping back and forth. Oh, look at that, there's a Bolt and a Gen 1 Volt in front of me. What an unbelievable day. Just heading to your local Chevy EV takeover, there's our Bolt, and my, basically exactly my old Gen 1 Chevy Bolt is in front of me. If GM marketing was around, they'd have a helicopter to get this shot, and it would be epic. When you're pulling up to a light in the Gen 2, you'd expect to be able to use this paddle, the Regen paddle here, to one pedal drive. And unfortunately, you cannot one pedal drive the Gen 2 Volt. You couldn't in the one either because GM really built the Volt to be the transition car for people moving from gas to EV. In the process, I think they built the perfect car, but the reality is they didn't give it a lot of EV features. I'd love to be able to let off the gas right now, have max regen. So I'm uh, holding the paddle to, not actually not even yet. Okay, there's the paddle and we're down to two mile an hour and then you'll feel the region let go basically. And what should be just holding it until it comes to a stop turns into it rolling forward. Like it goes right back into creep mode. Personally, I've always been a creep fan until I drove uh, the new Mini Cooper EV the other day and it was in one pedal mode and I couldn't have loved that more. Never having to move your foot, just letting off the gas and the car just coming to a stop at the light and then the light drops and you just slam it back into the ground and it's wide open. And you can drive EVs like that forever. I'm living proof. My Volt probably got launched off every light. All my friends that have Priuses, the daily drive them because it's just, even if you're a car guy, it's the best thing you can possibly have because it saves you so much money. You can go do Hoonigan stuff and waste money on gas. If you're not wasting 150 bucks a week on gas because your Prius is saving you that money, then you can waste so much more money, all right? That's a sidebar. My only note about the Prius and EVs and why we drive them. But we also beat them to death launch 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 until the tires are gone 
and they never break. So the old Volt was just like that for me. It had the one recall and uh, other than that, it, it never broke. My hope is this Volt is exactly the same. I'll probably be out here launching it off all the lights too. Uh, when it's in EV mode, it's just so much fun. 48, we're hopping on the highway. I'll just merge over and floor it. I mean, that's basically the speed limit. I already had to slam on the brakes. We can three lane merge with this thing. No question at all. So that's what it's like to drive the Generation 2 Chevy Volt. I don't have ratings to break it down for you with, but I can tell you that it's plenty fast. It's not fast like the, all the fast EVs, but it's plenty fast for all your daily activities. It handles just like you would expect, not terribly, but also it's no sports car, right in the middle basically. If they were all numbers, it's seven out of 10, seven out of 10, seven out of 10. That's really how you rate this thing. It's the perfect daily driver. It does everything just well enough at the right price. I know it's a time warp, but in the next video, we'll drive this thing home from Vegas and you guys can see just how well the car does on a long road trip. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop watchjargo.com for cool shirts, not like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do. And I will talk to you next time. All right, let me know in the comments below. Did I kill it? Do you think I bought the best daily driver? I am very excited about this and I don't think it's going anywhere for a long time. In fact, I might actually sell that truck because diesel's only going up. <laughs> so it might be time for a different truck altogether. And this one is gonna take over daily duty for a while. And luckily I can throw whatever I want in the back. I just, I might need to buy some WeatherTech so I can get it dirty.